Hello and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Journalist Hangouts, your number one current affairs program on television. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, 279 abducted Jengebe school girls in Zamfara State regain freedom. 25 aid worker trapped as Boko Haram fighters overrun Dikwa break into UN base in Borno State. And later on the show, Nigeria receives first batch of Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I'll be hanging out with Ghani, Kaede, Balogun, and Paul Dada. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for joining us. It's Paul Dada's birthday, GKB. Mm. Paul Dada, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Why are you taking us? Ah, COVID-19. You can't <laughs> take us because... COVID-19 uh, only works. Well, well, why, why you don't maintain social distance? Well, all I, all I did is um, well, my family, I mean, they, they gave me their birthday wishes in the morning before I left. Okay. And uh, in the office, we had some just uh, minor uh, modest celebration. So you can't take us to any club uh, so that Mr. Ozumusu <laughs> will not come and arrest our parade. You, you are very lucky that <laughs> you are very lucky that you are born in March. Okay. It's the month of champions. Mm, okay. yeah. Only the very best people are born in this month. All right, uh, absolutely. Okay. I agree. Blow your trumpet, please. I'm, not blowing, I'm just stating the obvious. <laughs> All right. Uh, now, after much wait and apprehension and conflicting reports. Some of the abducted students of Government Girls Secondary School, Jengebe in Zamfara State, have been freed by the abductors. Only 279 out of 317 abducted school girls were freed and received at the government house. So, so where are the rest? GKB. That's a million naira question that Nigerians are asking since the news broke overnight that the government gave us a specific figure of the students that were taken away from that school, but that the figures that were returned were about 20 something short. And so people are asking, but that should not be an impediment to celebrate the fact that these young women are back with us right now, and then we have to really look at it from that angle. On two levels, really. One, it shows that with a Purposeful leadership. We can get things done. I don't like the fact that we are reacting. We should be proactive enough to stop it from, from, from happening. But even if it has happened, the speed in which that we try to solve it is commendable at this particular level. Oh. Yes, uh, like uh, GKB said, it's a million dollar question. Uh, it, it's a question that the authorities need to answer. Uh, in days and weeks to come. Okay, 27, uh, 279 were freed. Their parents are happy, they are relieved. What about the parents of the other ones? So we must, be, uh, we must ask those questions, that question in particular, and then that, the answer must be given. But then, I, like he said also, it's like we are always, always, always reactive. We are not proactive. Okay, today um, we heard that the President, the federal government has, has banned um, mining activities in Zamfara, has declared the place a no-fly zone. But we've heard that before. In 2019, President Buhari did the same, and uh, nothing uh, has happened. Uh, I mean, the, the killings still continue. You, you see, which we, we, we know what the problems are. Yes, the activities of illegal miners are contributory to the banditry in the land. Also, you may ask me, uh, some of the 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 the, 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 the mine, legal miners are sponsors who cause you know trouble among the um, the miners the, 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 the cattle breeders and the, if the different cattle breeders so that communities can be displaced so when communities are displaced you have people uh, they have a leeway to to continue in their illegal activities so it is not enough for us to say, okay, we've done this, we've done this. How do we stop the schools in parts of the north from becoming endangered? It's like you go to, if, you, if you go to certain parts of the country, you are going to a place that is vulnerable to criminal attacks. I imagine that parents living in that area, each time their children go to school, their hearts are in their mouths. It's not supposed to be so. So, thank God these students are freed. We are very happy about it. 
But which I, I think one of the one of the makers ask say which is the next school <laughs> that will that the, the bandits will invade? When is it going to happen? We've seen it before. We've seen this happen before. It happened in Niger. It's happened in um, Bonus. It's happened in Dabchi. It's happened in Chibok. Uh, this keep happening, and we don't know what exactly is the blueprint. What exactly is the blueprint to solve this problem? Recently, um, the Interior Minister, when he was um, decorating the new um, the new Commander General of the NSCDC, he said NSCDC should come up with a blueprint for securing the schools. So we don't just want talk talk. We want to see the blueprint, okay? For what is the program? for securing the schools, to make sure that these children can learn without fear of being attacked, without fear of their schools being invaded. So these are questions that we must answer, and we must answer satisfactorily. GKB, yes, we are happy to be freed, but some most, people most want to, them, yeah. Yeah, that the girls have been freed and um, their parents will be happy. But a lot of people will want to ask the question, at what cost? And well, the effects of the implication of negotiating with these bandits. Well, the problem we face as a nation has always been this inability to articulate our positions when it comes to carrying along members of the populace. This has happened before. And we thought that by then, there will be a blueprint on the way forward. Basically, after Chibok, and then the boys in Yobi, that what can we do? What is the first thing to do if it happens again? In some countries, I'm sure you are aware, they always play out scenario, what they call the worst case scenario. Okay? What is the worst thing that will happen in this scenario? And then they prepare for that. But once this is over, we go back to sleep and wait for the next one. I will do all the, the thing all over again. So like I said, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And that to me is the danger that we face as a country. Because no matter what you say, schools in the north, especially boarding houses, are vulnerable at the very best. So when the president said <laughs> providers should uh, protect their schools, I laughed. Because one of the schools that have been raided, so far, are government schools. So it's like him telling himself what he needed to do by projecting it to other people. Because most of the schools being raided and children being taken away are mostly government schools. So it's not for him to tell us or to tell the owners of private schools what to do. It's for him, for, it's for him through his Ministry of Education and Ministry of whatever do works and infrastructure to do a blueprint that the private owners would now follow. On their own. It's not by telling us what to do, it's by showing us how to do it. And that to me is a fundamental aspect of why we have no blueprint to solve this problem. Yeah, GKB did not uh, answer my question the way I wanted him to answer. As in, I was saying, yes, the negotiation has been done. What, was those, what were those times that, were, that was agreed with the terrorists? Okay. And um, if Okay. Money change hand. We don't know how much change hand, but we're just saying that the effect of, you know, like promoting this industry because the industry is getting so much lucrative, and larger and larger. Well, they, they, they told us that um, there <laughs> no ransom was paid, but we don't know how true that is. But seriously, um, you asked the question: At what costs? Now, over time, we keep negotiating with terrorists with kidnappers. Now, it is at the cost of somewhat, you know, unwittingly, unwittingly, we are making the industry, okay, to thrive. We are making, because when you, when people that are criminals, people that should be in jail, we are negotiating with them all the time. Except those because if you remember, if you remember well, part of the demand of uh, the Boko Haram mm. guys when they wanted to release uh, some of the uh, the girls, they were saying that they are bom bombers. 
no, in certain yeah. <laughs> prisons should that be, they, yeah, should yeah. be released. This is, the, this is the problem where we, we, we are having in this country. Criminals are criminals. Now, except those who are repentant. Bomb makers, you know? Yes, except, mm -hmm. except those who are repentant. Because sometimes you need repentant criminals to turn them as state witnesses. It, it's, it's a standard everywhere. But we, I, I don't know. We, we cannot just keep being at the mercy of these people. How many are they, after all? What is their population compared to the Nigerian population? You, you understand? Why should we continue to be at their mercy? Now, one of the problems we have, the problems why we continue to be at the mercy of these criminal elements, this dear devil, this man of the underworld, is because, like we said, we are not proactive. We are reactive. We do not check these things before they happen. We do have proper intelligence gathering. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? It, it is possible. I, I, it is possible to preempt these things before they happen. It is. It is not an impossible thing. It can't keep happening every time. We make people cry. We make parents cry. We people, you know, and, and, sad. And it becomes a vicious. Cycle. It could be a vicious cycle. It's been going on. It has happened. It has happened many times over, and there is no guarantee that it's going to stop. So. We don't know which school they will visit next time. Then everybody cries, you know, bring, bring back our boys, bring back our girls, bring back our students, bring back our children. You know, we are very good at uh, all those hashtags, you know. Yes, but how do, we, how do we minimize this? Who are these people? We know them. They, I mean, they know the sick people. They are, not, they are people that are known. They are not faceless. They don't because know. When, they, when they are negotiating, how do they meet them? So look, it determines. Look at this issue of um, uh, illegal mining. I, 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 I spoke about before. Governments of Niger and um, and uh, and um, uh, Zamfara State years back negotiated with them. Thousands of people are being killed. You can't continue like this. Okay, I have my first call on the line. Abdul is calling us. Thank you for joining us, Abdul. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Yep. Yeah. This is Abdul Hawal from Milori. Okay, from Milori. Yes. Go ahead with your contribution, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes. I commend the governor, federal government and the state government for the world work done. And now, I want to ask and I want to appeal to the all the state governors. They should make good use of these security foods for the benefit of the masses. Because I don't know the All right. Now, GKB. Yes, the girls have been freed. Now, most of them. What we are talking about now is the root cause of the problem. Tomorrow, the kidnappers will go on the highways and they want to earn a living to their nefarious, carrying out their nefarious activities. So, and we're looking for a lasting solution. How can we get those youths, how can we get those terrorists out? Well, uh, as you said earlier, the first thing we have to understand is that these are criminals. We don't need to sugarcoat it. They are criminals. I call them bandits I'm or anything. What they are doing is a criminal activity. And the first job of government is basically the protection of lives and property. So what we need to do as a country is for the government to do the job they are employed to do. Protect us and our property. Now, back to the original question about what's the root cause. We all know how this began. Normally, once there's unemployment, people don't have education, people don't have jobs. Hmm. They will look for anything to do. And it's not really restricted to the north. It's all over the country. It is now compounded by the, fan, I don't want to use the word, the level that we are now using drugs, our youth, tramadol, all that thing. All these are contributing. And then... And extreme the, poverty. And then the death of the value system. When we are growing up, you know that what you are aspiring to do is something you know will happen probably in your 30s or your 40s. 
the young people of nowadays want to achieve it at 19. They want to drive a Mercedes Benz at 21. Once the value system collapsed, banditry and criminality is the next step. Because it means that there is no more checks and balances in the system to really get them. You know, say, mm -hmm. your, your child is not a, a washman and is bringing different clothes to the house. Nowadays, mothers of 419 are forming associations. Mothers of Yahoo uh, Boys. Yahoo <laughs> Boys have an association. Mothers of girls in Italy, in certain states, have a union. So that old dialect no longer works. Our value system has collapsed totally, and we are not good role models for those coming behind us. They've seen what we because the people will tell you, do as I say and not as I do. The young ones are looking at us and look at the way we say one thing and we do another. How we set up parameters for proper behavior and then we go the other way when it comes to implementation. And to be fair, they learn from the best. Because the generation in Nigeria, from those who took over from the British till now, have shown a spectacular lack of competence when it comes to providing for our young ones. Don't forget, Nigeria remains a very young, have a very young adult population. The average age of our young women is about 30. That means 70% of Nigerians are officially under the age of 30. We have a very young population, and there is no system that has been lined up to take care of them until recently. And that's why we said when they started the Empower thing and all that, the Anchor program, I said, this is too little, too late. Because you've not provided the structure to give them the tools to even use this thing you're asking for. For example, when we were in primary school, there's something they call vocation center. Where yeah, you, you are taught skills, yeah. carpentry, all that, at a very young age. Yeah. And then you go to secondary school and you do technical, whatever, I don't know what they call it now, technical studies, or whatever. Where you are also taught how to approach machine. So you are prepared by the time you are in GSS3. If you are not that brilliant, to use your hands. We used to have schools for elect and elect. That's true. All these are gone. Now everybody goes through the system, come out half baked, half educated, barely literate. And yet we want them to move into a system that has no provision for them. There was a time in Lagos, there's what they call the job center, uh, job exchange yeah. at Onyko. That means once you leave school, you register your name and they will they look for any job for you for a period. You and I know that the last system is still what is happening, they are still using it in the US. Hmm. Where you have to register that I need a job. And they now look for a job for you within the context of what is available. All uh, these are gone. All right. I have uh, another caller. Oyibo is calling us from Oshobo, Oshun State. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Yes, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Ayo, thank you for good job you guys are doing over there. I have a couple of questions I want to ask. One, I wanted to know these students that have been ab abducted. Is it, what do they use to carry them? Do they bring in trailers or <laughs> train to carry them? Because it, it sometimes you start to wonder how could somebody carry Almost 300 students one day. They, they said they use they use machine to carry them. How, how many can the machine carry? Do they use this machine to carry 60 people? Is that speaking? I think we need to, to, to leave this level of deceiving ourselves. As a nation, if you are carrying 10 human beings, gentlemen, if you carry one single person carrying 10 human beings, people will ask questions. And so, how do they do this? It's already an industry, and they, they, like the other guy said now. It's a serving industry. And so unless government takes steps to stop it, it's going to continue. If you deceive ourselves, carrying over 300 students, taking them away, hey, I don't see any other country of the world that that could happen, except Nigeria. Uh, I think something needs to be done. Where Thank you. Are Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that 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 you know? Coming from where everybody <laughs> <laughs> is coming from. And look, Yes, I gather that they, they were taken away you know, on motorbikes. Yeah. And how many kilometers out of that place 
and a lot of people will ask you, they didn't meet any checkpoints, police posts, like <laughs> I know <laughs> in the southern <laughs> part of the country. <laughs> Not even the tire tracks. <laughs> <laughs> where, where we are now, there's no how you can travel 20 kilometers outside Lagos. You can do that. That, that will not I, get. I, 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 <laughs> see, even if they walk on, even if they walk on foot, if you see people armed with guns, you will not wait. Even if they, even if they came into that school on mm. foot, you know, taking the nobody, who will wait now? We are just talking about security. We are uh, talking uh, about security operating with police, exactly. army, no, anybody. That is, yes, I, I, I absolutely agree. Nobody to accost them. But you have heard also that the the weapons some of these people carry are so sophisticated. Even police sometimes, I mean, they is what we know. Sometimes they flee. Sometimes mm -hmm. they can't confront some of these people. Even, you know, it's not new. In Nigeria, even in the Southwest area, it happens that ham robbers would have finished operating For hours. before police. I, I can still remember a story I, 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 I covered many, many years ago. Okay? There was a particular community in Shogunle, not too far from us here. Ham robbers came, about 40 of them were told. They operated, they killed people. I still remember one little girl that was trying to scale the fence, you know, and they shot her. The parents had escaped. And they up for the, within the period they operated, there was no, no police did not show up. Police will always show up when the deed has been done. So we should ask the police why, what is happening. But I want to ask, there's something I actually want to say. How do people turn out to become criminals? Uh, um, um, criminals? How do they turn out? With due respect to, to the leaders in the north, what I'm about to say, former Henry of Kano said it, he told them some, just a few years back, look, they, they, they are not investing in the retraining of the mind of their young ones. You have people, I used to live in Kaduna in 2002. I, I actually did my wife in, in Kaduna. You see, they are, they are used to be uh, you, people, this culture of begging, you, you know, here, when you beg, you know, if, if, you, if you are even broke and you're asking someone for money, you know, the way you would do it, you, you, you kind of, you are, you are shy, you know, to ask. They enjoy begging. You know, they have I, this I wouldn't want us to... No, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, no, 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 no <laughs> I'm know, not trying to incite. Do you understand? What? There's a system, there's a culture, there's a tradition. We're not talking about the no, culture what? or tradition. Now, I'm trying to lay foundation uh -huh. for what I'm saying. Right. What I'm, I'm trying to say, to say is that, okay, some of these people, the Almagiris are those who turn out to become, you know, criminals. criminals you know, and they become a scourge. Will it, will they become a scourge on the society. Because people are not, you have, you have the, this gap between the elites mm -hmm. and the poor. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was in Cardinal when this World Riot happened, and then they were asking, some of the people they caught. 2002. 2002, yeah. The people they caught, they were asking them, why? I mean, when the people were arrested. Some of them say, we're just giving 200 naira to go and fight. That's what I'm talking about, extreme poverty. People are kept perpetually in poverty, deliberately kept in poverty, so that they can be used as tools to cause mayhem in the society. You understand what I'm trying to say? They are, they are, they are, no education, no enlightenment. Mm. So we must reorientate people. You see, this is a long-term thing, you understand? There must be a change. Our brothers, the, the people in the north, our brothers and our sisters. The, the, we, the, 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 the northern elite, elites gain nothing. They won't gain anything if they don't do, if they don't take proactive measures to make sure that there is a mind, there has to be a mind shift, a radical mind shift. Okay. GKB, the, up, the bigger picture now is this thing has even snowballed into like a kind of confrontation between some people within the north and the southern part of the country. Yes. Okay. Oh, my producer is telling me, let's take this break. One, we'll come back. We'll talk more. It's still journalist hangout. We'll be right back after this breather. Please stay with us. Yes, it's your number one current affairs program on television, which are you live from television continent so that's uh, the best station of the year and gkb what we what we were talking about earlier as in i said it might snowball 
right now look at the blockage we are talking about uh, uh, food blockade we're talking about in Kogi state and everything and it is just filled by insecurity now the problem we are we have up north the so-called bandits they are coming uh, down south they are, they are, they are, they are here already they are here, yeah. <laughs> down south to wreck havoc and it's now like you know pitching one, the southerners and the northerners together against each other, and people are talking. And because these guys, they are not good guys. So we don't even need to say... Most of them are not even Nigerians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So look at that di dimension. Yeah, you have to understand that there's always been fault lines within the Nigerian Federation. No need for us to run away from that. The country is built on wobbly structures. And uh, those who have taken power in the last, especially the last 20 years, have tried not to admit that we have problems with this constitution, that we have problems that needs to be reformed. People always make reference to the American constitution, but they forgot it's been amended more than 18 times. That means it was not a perfect constitution. The Magna Carta has been known for since 1530, yet it was only in the last two years that they have certain positions that people have been having for years. So I think what we need to do, our political elite, those who are in government today, or those who will be in government tomorrow, is to bring up the political will to make a difference. Because the constitution is not working, and it's, instead of bringing us together, it's taking us apart. Because once they are seeing justice in a document, they're supposed to guide you. That means there are certain people who always have an advantage. And people are saying, okay, let's have a level playing field as much as practicable. That's why insecurity now is widening that fault lines that we have in the country in the last 100 years. What we need to do is what we've told them. We need state police because it's easier if the police is overstretched for state police to work. The civil defense cannot be a substitute for state police. Last month, or a Matakum cannot be a substitute. It must be a culturally recognized state police structure that will work. Because you and I know, as well as those who travel abroad, that there is a certain level of deterrence if you know you cannot work the system. If you know that, ah, I cannot do this act here because I have nobody to run to. But in Nigeria today, there are certain things that are done because you know you can always run to the barracks to call your brother who is there, or run to the police station, or call your brother who is there. But in a situation that the local laws are to be obeyed and to be enforced by the local police, this will be the beginning of bringing out the tempo that we are going through. We cannot run away from insurgency. We cannot run away from criminality. But we must be able to carry people along in such a way that they own the security apparatus. Right now, a lot of people, especially in certain parts of the country, believe the police to be an occupational force. That uh, the police just there, not for them, but to protect certain people against them. And that to me is the danger. Because we know what happened at Ensas. We know what happened to the police. Those who protected the police are basically local people. Not the elements that were done. So what we need to do now, seriously, is to work on this constitution. The first thing we need to do, a lot of things, for example, I, have no, I don't know why the federal government is still in agriculture. It's not their business. Provide the dams, provide the policy. Let the state of men run with it. But because a lot of things the federal government are doing, they don't need to be there. And that's how we have this problem. The center is so concentrated that people feel that they must get there. And if they have to do that by causing mayhem, they are willing to do so. All right, moving on now. To dare and instill terror in the cities area is how terrorists in Nigeria's northeast operates. In another daily move, Scores of Boko Haram and Iswab fighters overran Dikwa and attacked a UN base in Brownu states, trapping 25 aid workers on Monday evening. Gentlemen, this thing is, is, is just getting to a boiling point and we, we, in one breath, we are talking about bandits. In another hand, we are talking terrorists. about terrorists. We are talking about Boko Haram. And I be, <laughs> we, we are faced with it. So I don't envy the people that are saddled with the responsibility of you know, keeping the country safe.
honestly, um, it, it's not something that is actually easy. We can sit down here and criticize them. It's not easy, but that is what they are being employed for. I'm not, I, I, can't, I can't be there. You can't be there. None of us can be there. So they are the experts, and they are supposed to know what to do. Well, just um, a few days ago, we were celebrating that, OK, the, uh, the military took over, uh, I mean, the recovered Mate. Mate, yeah. yeah so, um, but again, I, I think I want to give kudos to our troops, because they repelled, actually repelled these attacks. You know, the, 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 gun, the gun drill went on for hours, probably up to 20 hours hmm. since yesterday. And they, 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 they've repelled, that's the, the latest update I got, they've repelled the, the attack. But then, how? Uh, do these um, terrorists continue to thrive? Now, there are reports of the local population, oh, nice people, yeah. people mixing up with the local, local population, who serve as informants to Boko Haram fighters. Some years ago, I don't know whether you, 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 you were aware mm. that Boko Haram was giving soft loans to artisans. Mm. But there, there, was, there, there was this case of one Ibrahim, a, a, a fish trader, you know, who was uh, uh, abducted by Boko Haram, and then he was told, he was offered, he said it himself, yeah, he was offered uh, 1.4 million. When soft mm. loan, do, do you understand? Mm. When the impact of government is exactly. not felt exactly. in some areas. Exactly. Vacuum will always be there. Exactly. 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 So and these people will just and that they were given soft that. loans so that they could, I mean, be the highs of, of the terrorists. And, even the military has confirmed that that is happening. That, okay, if they even have to plant landmines. Because uh, you ask yourself, look, the, with the number of uh, bombings that the Nigerian Air Force have carried out, mm. with the number of killings, the number of, in the last 10 years, how do they regroup? Exactly. How do they <laughs> recruit more people? So if we don't deal with this but the particular part of the problem, we may be in for a long ride. That it's, it's might not be a military, uh, 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 it's something with military about, solution. Exactly, it's not just about bombing. Hmm. Okay, we need. I don't know how it will be done, but I, I, I know that the, the, the military authorities can begin to engage more with the, with the residents. You know, with if you see uh, strange persons, that's failure of intelligence. Yeah, failure yeah. of intelligence. If you see strange persons, if you see people walking in suspicious manner, you know, I, I of course, you know that that place, those areas are porous. Anybody can, once you can, you, you, know, you, know, you can easily yeah, match yes. with the population, even if you are not from there. Though, I don't think, well, there are two things that people can easily get lured by, by, by whatever Boko Haram is dangling before them. Money. But I, I, because I, of the extreme poverty. Exactly. But I also like to think that I put a very principle because it's their land. Eventually, who suffers? Who suffers the most? So there are also people who I believe are upright. That is why upright. That's why you had this um, civilian so JTF and all of that. People who are that, actually. That rose up against. Exactly. They are concerned. People have been displaced. Homes, companies have been displaced. So we need to find a way of fixing this. How do these informants, how, 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 do, uh, how, how do the Boko Haram terrorists infiltrate the local population such that you now have informants among them? Maybe some of them are homegrown, maybe some of them are coming help from elsewhere and they are mixing up with the population. We, are, we, are, we need to be able to be beyond military minds. Hmm. Beyond military minds, this has to be done. Do you, do you this is a big problem. Because yes. raising this is very jammy, beyond what we, with the military bombings and everything, that they, we have to just look at how do they reach out to these people, how do they get them? Well, you have to understand that the, a lot of people don't seem to have the, the trust. The original Boko Haram, basically, were indigenous to that area. Well, don't forget that even after giving them amnesty, some went back home. That means they know their parents, they know where they live. So we cannot learn from that fact. Of course, they are now in fusion of foreigners. But the original Boko Haram was made up basically of indigenous people of that axis. So and most of them have not left. That means either they've had children who are born into Boko Haram, who have not been taken back yeah. to their grandparents, yeah. who have been indoctrinated from birth. Yeah. It's not peculiar to Boko Haram. All, all countries in the world have spies in every state. The United States is notorious for creating spy cells in almost every country. So we are, we are not going to treat it as something that is unique. What the army needs to do is what he has said. They have to gain the trust of the local population to the level where they can isolate those who are supplying information to Boko Haram. 
but it will be difficult because somebody who gives you money again the reverse will say once I have taken money from you the tendency is that I will remain loyal to you because at that point in my life you came through for me and that's what most of them are feeling you may be looking at it as an outsider as basically as something that is bad but the man is looking at survivor at that point in time when somebody came forward, his local government chairman has not been, I've not been in that town for maybe three years. Senators have not come home in, in eight years. Governor maybe will get there once in a year. It's these people that they see. Mm. So it's beyond the military aspects. It's about creating a trust level, so much so that these people will trust the army. Mm. And by extension, the Nigerian government. And I think one way they, I think one way they can do that is this. We've had reports of even human rights violations by the military. Military can also engage in community service, sanitation, show that you care, you understand. Mm. Military can help build markets. Military can help build markets. Bridges. Bridges. Oh, you know, yes. You know, all these um, short shots for food bridges and all of that. CSR. Show the people, you know, don't, it's not just to show, uh, it's not just to be showing might, military might, you know, be friendly. Show that you care. You can build huts that have been vandalized. If possible, you can give, give um, loans or something. You know, you can help farmers. You can even go help them farm. They should feel the presence. They should of feel the presence of the military. That look, these are not just people who uh, are in khaki and harmed. They are also human beings. They should show their humaneness. They may be able to win the trust of some of these um, uh, of this um, look at, look look, locals, they may be able. It may it may work a long in a long way, you know, in winning their trust. Hmm. So, Jimmy, ultimately now, when we want to look at those areas still affected, because you discover that oh, we we are we are here today. Bukharam will go to, to another place, the wreck havoc, you know, and they are almost everywhere and. That's just two weeks ago. They were very close to uh, Meduguri town. Bikwa. To, the, the Bikwa, Bikwa is uh, less than 100 kilometers to Meduguri. Even the, a, the, 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 the boys playing football very outside that. Yeah, uh, which by, uh, that's if we put it in perspective for somebody in Lagos. That's between Mowe and uh, Lagos Island. That, that's about the range. Or let's with, say like, without the traffic. Oh. Uh, without without traffic. traffic <laughs> Uh, within an open space. Exactly. We are with no buildings. That's how close they are. So that means we cannot step out to the uh, Maduguri Dikwa Road. We are move for about 10 minutes without coming in confrontation with these people. That's how bad it is. Uh, Maduguri is becoming a mega camp now where everybody in Borno comes into. That to me is the danger. Okay. Because all they need to do now, which we don't pray for, is to take over a major town like my Duguri, and make it part of the caliphate. Then the world will now become more than we can handle. Right now, we can still pretend that there are some places not under the, not under Bukwara. We can still pretend that Nigeria army is in control of everywhere. But you cannot pretend like that if you should get this near to a major capital city like my Duguri. And that, to me, is where this is going. And whatever we need to do, that's why I want to commend the armed forces. Sometimes it's about psychology. Even if you, are, if you are getting losses or you are winning battles somewhere, there are some places you cannot afford to lose for psychological reasons. And Dikwa is one of them. Because it's so close and it's a very major, major melting point in that axis that cannot be lost to the Bukwara. The former chief of army staff actually um, told Nigerians now that look in his confirmation, Senate confirmation told Nigerians that he doesn't see the war ending in less than 20 years. That's reality check that if the former chief of army staff former. has his intelligence, he has been there, he, has, he did 66 months <laughs> in that position and now he's not telling us it's nothing that is it's not, it's not something that will go soon. Well, he, he, he knew why he said that, and um, he knew why he actually said that. How uh, deep seated, how deep uh, uh, the is, problem of, is. It was, in, it was the army chief, so I want to believe that he knew what he was saying. Uh, he, he, he more than most people, he more than most people saw uh, problems. Times. He had access to information that 
most people don't uh, have. However, I would say that remains his opinion. There is a new sheriff in town. Now, he had done all he could, all the he could, to all the ideas he could bring. You know, he had done it. Like I said before, I think I think we'd seen the best. We saw the best of them, and Nigerians thought that the best of them, the best that they gave, was not good enough. Okay, that was why. Um, they are, that's the opinion. You know, President that, Buhari like, compensated yeah, him yeah, with an appointment. Uh, but Mr. So President Buhari is just one person. President Buhari is the president. Uh, but he was the, the commander in chief. Uh, he's, he's there at the pleasure of Nigerians. I say a lot of Nigerians, you know that a lot of Nigerians were saying. He has been confirmed. They, they, they all went to the Senate and the uh, well, National Assembly, you guys. And your representatives confirmed. But, but, but you know, in many, in many situations, public opinion, opinion doesn't count here. Don't let us from the argument. But, 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 <laughs> I, I, I think, I, I, but what, I, what I want to say is this. Now, that is opinion. And it may be, I want to give an informed opinion. But I don't think those who are running it now should be, should, I mean, be discouraged. Okay. So that's what I think notice. I have Adi from Akure calling us. Thank you for joining us, Adi. Oh, and we lost. I don't think they should. They should, they should mm. be. No, the I think the answer was which was politicized, was already provided by the Northeast Development Commission. Okay. That was created solely for the rebuilding, because mm. they're already thinking that once the war is won, there's a need for to rebuild okay. the entire Northeast mm. because of the abject level of poverty that is there. But you and I know that things like that tend to become an elitist pool, basically to take money. Because the Northeast Development Commission's job mainly is to do exactly what you asked. Go to the people, provide them with things that they will need, and then rebuild the infrastructure in such a way that they will have confidence in government. It's been on now for about four years, and all I hear from them are basically press conferences and seminars. Is that bad? The whole commission giving billions of naira and nothing to show for it. And that's the answer. We've already arrived at the answer. We're just waiting for the war to end. But even with that, they've not done the needful uh -oh. to, to, to that's that's the problem uh, with If I look at it from the angle of the war has not ended even when you have um, uh, surmounted the problems posed by the terrorists. If that's what you are saying, because of this, they need to rebuild, they need to educate the people, they need to put up infrastructure, yes, I, I will agree. It's going to actually take a long time to rebuild this. But you first have to build the trust. Exactly. Build, the, build the trust, build the infrastructure, build the villages, build the communities. So it's going to take, it's a continuous You have to feel the presence of government. But it is something that has to be done. It has to be done. And finally on the show, one year after the outbreak of COVID-19 in Nigeria, the fight against the pandemic is on. It's Sharing to know that the country has taken delivery of the first batch of the Oxford Extra Zeneca COVID-19 vaccines in Abuja this Tuesday, with a delivery of 3.9 million doses out of 16 million expected in the country, the race for the preservation, distribution, and vaccination begins across the country. So, how, how well, do we start from here? Uh, <laughs> what, what we need to do straight away, of course is uh, frontline workers. Uh -huh. That's the first set to get it. Incidentally, this is just 4 million doses, and then uh, two batches, that'll be for just 2 million people. So what we need to do right now, I, I agree that we have to do the symbolic ones. Maybe give the president a shot, and the vice president, maybe less than 10 people or 15, just to encourage people to take the vaccine. But what we must not do is politicize this and take it to the elite. The first people that should get it, of course, at the frontline workers. This is um, 3 point um, and that's about 3 million. 5. That's just about for 2 million people. And then after doing that, we go to the vulnerable. Those who are already in the hospitals, who are already heavily affected. Then the aged. That should be the next set. And then, of course, those with pre-existing conditions. Before we get to the general populace. Because then, unless we do that, this will just be a drop in the ocean. I will not solve the problem. So because it's so small, Let's use it for those who are really facing this war, who are the frontliners in this battle. Like I said, maybe 100 or 200 reserve for the usual suspects, the political leaders. But the majority of it should go 
to those who are risking their lives every day to save others. Don't you think, but with this vaccine, don't you think there will be um, a kind of tendency that people will go complacent? That's all, we're expecting more. More will still come at the end of the day. And um, the, the non-pharmaceutical interventions will not be adhered to by Nigerians. Well, uh, uh, people need to understand, they need to understand the facts about these vaccines first. They need to understand, if everybody, if they need to know that even these vaccines are not um, 100%. 100%. In fact, the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is less effective than the Pfizer and the Moderna, Moderna. types. In fact, the, the Pfizer one, I think it has about 95% efficacy, 94. Moderna 94%. Uh, this one is over 60 percent. Over 60 percent, yeah, over 60 percent. It's not foolproof. Exactly. You, South Africa even rejected it because they said it wasn't effective. I am not saying for this, their own strength. For their own strength, yeah, for their own strength. Let's 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 put that. Um, let's let people understand that for the because of their strain of uh, coronavirus. Mm. But we need to understand that even those who have taken it in advanced countries are still using their face mask. They are, still they are even saying that the fact that you are vaccinated does not mean that you cannot still transmit it. You may not feel the symptoms yourself uh, because you have been vaccinated, but you can still pass it. They need to also understand that you have to take, uh, you have to vaccinate twice two within the space two of two, two, two doses. Yeah, two, two jabs. Doses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two jabs mm -hmm. before you can be, uh, it can be effective. Now, people also need to understand that the goal, the goal is to vaccinate 70% of the population within two years. And it's going to be in four phases. That is the plan. Four phases. This is just so. If we are having just 3.9 million doses out of what's the population of Nigeria? Okay, let's say what million. Million. <laughs> so <laughs> it is just like um, a drop of water yeah. in an ocean. So people it's just one percent of the, our population. People don't need to think that like, you should, now we should celebrate. Now we have vaccines. Even U.S., Britain, advanced countries, they are not resting. You still see those who who, who have been who have received the jab still. Uh, being uh, very, very so, being showing, very, showing the symptoms. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, or be, even being very careful, you know, trying to um, still they still tell them wear your face mask and all of that. So uh, COVID nineteen is not something. Let's be very realistic. Not something that's going to go away very soon and just go away like that. You know, it's not going to go away by uh, having <laughs> vigils or we just having vigils or going to prayer mountains. Okay, <laughs> we have to do what <laughs> we have to be. We have, we have, to, to, we have to put in the work. Have to put in the work, so that is just it. You have to put in the work, but hopefully, maybe within a few years, some people are predicting that maybe it, it might go in the way of common code and all of that. But till then, let's be careful. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the vice president will be vaccinated publicly on Saturday. That's what and, I said. Um, because the, there have been some people with a lot of skepticism about this um, vaccines still having, they still have their doubts. Mm -hmm. And uh, was it yesterday one Olympic star actually said that um, it's, it was, it was going, it's, it's likely to miss the Olympic because he doesn't want to be, you know, vaccinated. vaccinated. And when you look at the, what would this kind of move when you see your number one and your number two citizen uh, that's what get I said. vaccinated That's publicly. what I said earlier, that we have to make provision for the symbolic ones. Okay. To show people that this is safe, mm. Mr. President will take it, even governments will take it. That's what I said. I'm willing to concede like 200, 250 for that particular symbolic gesture. But I still insist that the majority should go to those who really need it. But I haven't said that. You can, like you said, it's not by prayer. Okay, I've said that before. It's not, it's not by prayer, it's by putting in the work. And our job as journalists is also to ensure that we let people know. That is not yet to look at. Mm -hmm. What we have is basically a vaccine is basically to protect you. It doesn't mean that you cannot be a relay person. You cannot give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that's more dangerous now. Because people will just relax that after all I'm vaccinated. Mm -hmm. But it's at that point in time that it's most dangerous. Because it will now move with his, his parents who are injured, his children who have other conditions and cause a lot of problems. So I think it's right that the president should get the first jab, the vice president should get the second jab, and so on and so forth. Okay. It's kind of so that people can believe that okay. the other side telling us stories that, that mm. is not true. The restriction that you know that was placed by the federal government, a lot of people they're they not taking it serious again. <laughs> but see what happened in Lagos State with the with the reading of that club, yeah, uh, and the. the they were caught around 3 a.m. 
and I think there's still a kind of restriction between 12 midnight and 4 a.m. Honestly, it's uh, been uh, mostly oh, observed. The Europeans have been mostly observed in the, the bridge. bridge. Uh, yeah. it's, it's just the attitude of our people. But then, I also think that our leaders are not showing examples. We've seen gatherings. We've, we've watched an inauguration where there was no physical distancing. We've seen um, re party registration. We've seen NIN, uh, what's it called, this NIN registration, where uh, government, governmental authorities are not showing examples. So this attitude. We've seen party registration, party registration that's not done online. That's not done online, which it can easily be in these days of this 2021, for God's sake. And then you now come and tell the people not to have their own day. Not to have their own day. Not to have their weddings and bring in um, 500, 1,000 people and call uh, one musician, you know, to, to, you know, to, uh, to perform. Mm -hmm. And then you go and arrest those people. Nobody can arrest you because you are an authority. So, you see, it goes both ways. If you want people to have confidence in you, want people to believe you, up to now, as I speak, there are people who still think it's all a ruse. Up to now, there are Nigerians think COVID-19 is all. There are people who think the vaccine is antichrist. It's the agenda of, agenda of the antichrist. A lot of people are pushing everything on the social I media. I don't have one number uh, after you've been vaccinated. Yeah, all of, all of that. <laughs> funny. All of those funny, funny uh, uh, rhetorics that people are pushing, mm -hmm. ideas people are pushing. Conspiracy theories. So uh, conspiracy theories. So we need we, the, the government himself. They say a leader is someone who knows the way, go, uh, shows the way, and goes the way. You must lead by example. So what are we going to do about, you know, some unscrupulous um, citizens that might want to catch in on this situation by producing fake vaccines but, uh, and tell Nigerians to come and... <laughs> Again, we, know, we, always knew, business we, for we, us. we knew that this will happen. You know, we've spoken about it before. And the government still need to do the needful. Let people know those who are qualified to take this vaccine. Because unless you do that, People are just going to assume that whatever they see on social media is the truth. And they will be, they will be scammed. Persons should only be given a primary health care center. Yeah, I think that's the plan. People should know exactly where to go, exactly. what qualifies them to get the job. You can't just go anywhere and be so taken. That, you, they, 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 most people who do this will be, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, will be medical professionals mm. who will do this scamming that we are talking about. Because you, you believe them is a doctor mm. or is a nurse. And they cannot lie to you. Uh, you pay through your nose for the plausible, uh, plausible effects. <laughs> when they will just jab water into you, uh, and you think you can you now think you, are, you are safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the you can be walking without observing, <laughs> without observing <laughs> the protocols. <laughs> the plausible effects, really. Just assume you are well, mm. when you are not. All right. Thank you so much, Peter Dada. Thank you for the, ba the bad day boy today. Uh, the bad day boy now. But no, we don't see anything. No, we are not no. going away quietly. Don't, don't go a club, Isha. No, no, no. I don't even club. That's right. I'm not a club. I'm not. I'm not someone who loves clubbing. Uh, the reason why you are being left on the hook is that you are you are born in March. <laughs> Only you. champions are born in March. Yes, yeah, GKB, Thank you for your contribution. And uh, people have been asking after BK. Okay. Yeah. B -B BK is somewhere in Abuja on official duties, I think it will be we'll like sometimes next yeah. week. So, and that's where we draw the curtains of today's program of Journalist Hangout. Don't forget to join Journalist Hangout on Sunday. That's from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. That's two hours on Sunday. Every Sunday, we now do Journalist Hangouts by 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun saying God bless Nigeria.